Hello everyone, welcome to the second ROS tutorial. Previously I described what ROS is and basically is a platform that enables real-time communication between different pieces of code and we showed how you can install this in Ubuntu. So hopefully by now you have already installed Ubuntu dual boot or in virtual box and have ROS installed on it. Now I'm going to get in some uh, more details and talk about some of the commands that shows some of the features of ROS and we're going to see how we can uh, connect these pieces of code and communicate between two different pieces of code in ROS environment. When you install ROS, so I'm going to briefly go through some commands then I will open up the Linux shell and use these commands. So when you install ROS, uh, first thing I showed that after installation, you need to source the installation file using the source command. And it depends on which version of Ubuntu you're using and which version of ROS you installed. For instance, if you have Melodic, this is the command. You have to source the setup bash file for ROS. If you are Neotic, you change this to Neotic. Or even, previous versions or other versions you have to source it so every time you open a terminal you have to source the ROS setup file and I showed if you don't want to do this every time you can permanently write this command into the Linux shell bash file and every time you open a terminal this command will be automatically run and you don't have to repeat this every time after we installed ROS the first thing to do is create the workspace where your codes and your packages will be stored. And this workspace is usually called Catkin workspace. You're going to create the Catkin workspace. And then whenever you put a package inside of it, you can build this package using a command called Catkin make. I will go through these commands later, but just want to introduce them. This is a ritual basically. You have to follow every time you want to install a new package you build this workspace from now on you put packages inside the workspace and whenever you want to install them you use catkin make command every time you install a package you have to source the bash files for the package as well using source development devil setup dot bash similar to the previous uh, sourcing code you can also write this in your general linux cell, linux bash file so every time you open a terminal it would automatically run this but this is how we install a package i will show this later but after we do this we build the catkin workspace where basically our codes will be stored if you go there you will see there are three folders one is the source folder inside Catkin workspace. This is where we put the packages. Packages must be in this folder, otherwise ROS won't recognize them. And then there are two folders that we don't really touch. This is build folder. Whenever you build a package, it will be stored here and development folder. This is where the build files will be recorded. In the build space, you will see some of the information, loggings about packages. If there are errors, they are inside. We don't touch these two. We work in the source folder. And now let's talk about how ROS works. Every time you want to start ROS, you have to use ROS core command. This will basically start running ROS. This is a main node, we call it. It's a master node. Everything else will be built on this core so after we build the workspace install the package we type ros core this will start the main core for ros and then after that the way ros works communicates between different codes is using nodes and topics so what the node and topic mean a node is a block of code an executable block of code whatever you want to do for instance if you want to do an image processing algorithm you build an executable python code and that would be your node 
and nodes can communicate with the master node ROS core command that we run. Whenever we run ROS core, then we can run different nodes using ROS run. ROS run command runs an executable Python code that we have built before and put in the source folder. I will show this later, but generally knowing that nodes are exec executable pieces of code. And whenever you want to run node, you use ROS run command. You can also check some of the features of the node using ROS node list or ROS node info. We'll see how these work later. Another thing that we have is topics. That's how different nodes communicate with each other. Nodes communicate through topic. For instance, you have two nodes. Let's say, let's say this is one piece of code, node one, node two, second piece of code. Example, one node is a, a algorithm that one takes images from the camera and processes them. And then the second node is the algorithm that wants to employ the images to move a robot. You need to send data from node one to node two and you want to be real time. Your ROS uses topics to do so. Basically, a node can always publish the data that it wants to send to other nodes on a topic. And the node that wants to get the data will subscribe to the topic to get the data. That's how data is transferred. That's how ROS guarantees real-time communication. And uh, topics are not code. Topics are something that we build inside our code for the nodes. And it's just a concept. We publish data to it and we subscribe to retract data to it. One thing to know that many nodes can always subscribe to the topic and get data from it. And lots of nodes can also publish to the topic. So this communication line is like a two-way communication. One node can even subscribe and publish on the same topic. So any node has access to topics and any node can write or read from topic. There are commands to see how, what are some of the topics when you have a package installed. ROS, topic list, we show you the list of topics and there are some commands to see, okay, what's the data inside the topic and get some information about what type of data is in the topic that I will show later. There is another way for communication beside uh, nodes and topics. This is called a service. The difference is when we're using a service, a node will request data from a service and the service will respond. Previously, topic is always running. When nodes are publishing data to topic, topic always exists. Any node can come and anytime get data from it. Service is different. If services are built to do a specific task and you directly communicate with it and ask it to send you its piece of data and it does. For instance, what is this used for? It's used for, for changing some of the features of our system, our uh, whole pipeline. For instance, we have image processing algorithms that are uh, working with a simulated environment. You want to change one parameter in the simulations. You don't have to build codes and topics for this. You can build a service that whenever it's called, it just changes one parameter. So services are not used a lot. We mostly deal with nodes and topics, but service also exists. The main difference to recap, when you have a communication between nodes and topic, you publish subscribe. You always can send data and retrieve data from a topic. This is called a subscriber publisher communication line. It's two way, it's always open. Many nodes can subscribe to a topic and many nodes can publish to the topic as well. The second type is a service client communication line. When a node only asks for a specific service. When the service is done, the communication line is closed. This is a one-to-one -one communication line. You can only, one node can access the service. If a node is connected to the service, another node cannot communicate with it. So it's a one-on-one -on -one line. That's the main difference. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is what type of data can nodes 
send to a topic. So node is a piece of code can publish data to a topic or subscribe to retrieve data. But what is the data? There are different data supported by ROS. And these are uh, stored in a package called ROS messages. Lots of different types of data. For instance, float, float 32 bit, float 64 bit. Images are one type of data. Arrays are one type of data. There are lots of data. If you check the ROS messages webpage, you see a whole list of types of data. And uh, a specific topic can only handle one type of data. For instance, if you have a node that wants to communicate with another node, it wants to send, let's say, a position inside an image. That is an array of float data. You put it on a topic, another node subscribe retrieves. Now, if you want to send the pure images as well, this is a different type of data. You need to build a new topic for that. So then the node has to send the image to the second topic. And if another node wants to get the images, it has to access to that topic. So each topic has a specific message type, float, integer, images, arrays, anything. There are ways to analyze the messages on a topic. For instance, if you call a specific topic, the type of it using ROS topic type, the name of the topic, it will tell you, okay, what type of message is in there. And you can manually also use the console to publish data to a topic as well. I will show this a bit later. And finally, there are some features in ROS for saving data and processing them. Data in ROS is usually stored in a file that's called bag file. It's a file with the extension of bag. And I will show how this works. Bag file basically stores data that are passing through the topics in a massive file. And then you can retrieve these and process them later if you want. So there are ways to record the data that's going through the topic. Another feature is the RQT user interface. I will show how this works later. It's an interface for logging and analyzing the data in real time. When a node is publishing to topic, you want to see, okay, what's the data? How is it changing? You can use the RQT to see what's going in there. And so that is for today's tutorial. Now let's get into the uh, Linux uh, uh, Ubuntu environment and practice some of the things that I said and see how it works. I have already opened uh, VirtualBox and Ubuntu. First thing, when we install ROS, uh, there are, when you want to install package, there are specific steps you have to follow. And every time you want to install package, you have to do this. Most of the students run into problems because they don't follow these steps. These are not random steps. You have to follow these exactly. Otherwise, you run into errors. So please pay attention on how I can install a package. When we installed ROS in the previous tutorial, it will store all the packages that comes with ROS into our folder here called opt. You see, there would be a folder named ROS and the version of the ROS I installed was Noetic. Inside of it, there are lots of libraries. These are different existing packages that ROS uses for different applications. You might use some of them, you might not use some of them. For instance, there is a robot simulator that we're going to use in the practicals and in the labs. There's a ROS bag uh, package that's the part that helps with saving data there are lots of packages we don't go through all of these we use a few of them but it the, lots of packages exist here and if you check here then you know okay ROS is installed now going back to my home folder the first thing as I said after installing ROS is to create a workspace where you will store your code and packages. I'm going to open up a terminal, pressing Alt, Shift, and T. 
the first thing I want to do is create my workspace using make directory command mkdir and I call this catkin workspace catkin workspace I created this folder so in my home now you will see that is a workspace everything I will do from now on is inside of this I will go to the folder One thing is in Ubuntu shell, if you're not familiar, always pressing tab will fill out the commands for you. I want to go inside that folder using cd command. I type ca, press tab, it will fill it out for me. This is a very nice feature, you can use it a lot. If you don't remember the name of a folder or a file or even a command, you can press tab and it will fill it out for you. So I created my Catkin workspace. Now I go in there. I need to create a source file folder. Source folder is where I will save any code or package that I will develop. Source. I created a source folder in there. Now if I go to Catkin workspace, I have a source folder. And whenever you want to install a package, you use the catkin make command. Catkin make command will install any packages that are inside the source folder. And after it's done, you see two new folders are created, build and development. These are the ones that I said we don't touch really. These are logging info and building files for a package stored in there. Everything we do is inside source. So this is how you install package. Sidebar, I said we use catkin make command. Okay. Let me clear this. There is an option to use the command called catkin build. It's exactly the same as catkin make. If you want to use catkin build, you have to install the package for it. It automatically is not included with ROS. We're not going to use it a lot, but for your information, most people use catkin build instead of catkin make. There is a difference. If you have two packages that have files with the same name, catkin make will confuse these packages. Catkin build won't, to simply put it. So it's more common to use catkin build, but we use catkin make here. We don't want to make things too complex. So, so far we really learned that you will build a workspace inside of it, we build a source folder, and using catkin make, you can install any packages that you want. Now to practice, I have built a package before. I have built a package that uses two nodes and one topic. One node is a Python command code that will send a number to the topic. And another node is a second Python code that will read that number from the topic. Very simple package. In the next video, I will tell you how to create the package. But so far, assume we have this package. Whenever we want to install a package, we have to copy and paste it into our source folder. I have created a package called tutorial that has two codes that send a number back and forth. I copy this into my source folder. And then I use catkin make command to again install this package. Now the package is installed. One thing that you must keep in mind, this is where lots of people forget it and then they will run into problems. Whenever you install a new package, you have to source the setup bash file. How do we do it? Source inside catkin workspace, there is development folder where the setup bash file is installed. You have to run this command every time you install a new package. If you don't run it, it's like you haven't installed it at all. 
and every one you update a package again it, you run this command again as well if you want to avoid keep running this command like previous tutorial you can put it in linux shell bash file and then from then every time you open a terminal it will automatically run this command let me open up that bash file gedit command opens the editor for modifying notes and that's the bash file for the terminals this is a bunch of codes that will run every time you open up a terminal at the very bottom of this code you can copy this line to source the setup file inside the development folder inside the catkin workspace every time our terminal opens you can also i have previously in the previous tutorial i sourced the bash file for the whole ROS as well inside here these two should be here then every time you open up a terminal all the setup bash files for the ROS and for the packages will be all uh, instantly sourced you don't have to keep running this command so keep in mind when you install a package either run this command or make sure you have it in your general bash file so it will automatically run it for you and before i show the features of the ROS we're still installing packages one last thing that you need to keep in mind whenever you bring a package in my catkin workspace source folder there is a package i just copied called tutorial for the labs i will give you the same package you copy it here and we will work with that package but whenever you copy a package there are installed inside of it some python codes in a folder called scripts or source these python codes build our nodes these are the code blocks that do everything for us this is the code that we're gonna write I have created two codes before that send a number to each other and copy them here whenever you bring a package and install it you have to make all the Python files inside of it executable if these are not executable ROS will not recognize them how do we make them executable all we have to do is go inside that folder so I'm currently in catkin workspace. I will go inside the source folder. Inside of it there are, if you look at it using ls command, there is my tutorial package. I will go inside tutorial. I will go where my Python codes are. And I will make them executable. How? Using change mode command change mode to plus x means executable and name of the code i just put pu press tab it fills it for me there was second code i have to make it executable done then we're ready everything is ready package installed all the python faults are executable now we can work with it so this is a step that you have to follow to make install a new package and after i made them executable to be sure i will run catkin make command again so when you want to run catkin make command you should be inside inside the catkin folder catkin work is install the package again remember you can source it after the package installed okay so my code is executable i've installed the package i've sourced the setup file everything is ready 
So today we're not gonna talk about uh, details of how to develop a package, but for now assume we have these two Python codes. One will send a number to a topic, the other one will retrieve it. I wanna run these nodes in the package. First thing to do when you wanna start uh, working with ROS, you have to run the ROS core. This is the main master node. This, after you run it, then ROS is on, you can work with it. I will open up a new terminal. This terminal is now in use. ROS core is running on it. We're not gonna touch it. Open up other terminals. I have two nodes in my package. One is called publisher that will send the number to a topic. To run a node, we use ROS run command. ROS run name of the package. The package was called tutorial. And name of the node, publisher. I press tab, it will find it for me. Now it is running. That node is running now and it's publishing a number to a topic. Let's analyze it. If you want to analyze a node, there are several commands you can use. For instance, ROS node list. This will list all the nodes that are running. There are two nodes running. One is ROS out. ROS out is the main ROS core the master node that I started running first. There is a second node called publisher node with some numbers. This is the node that I just ran. So I can see it here that it's running when I list the nodes. You can ping a node using ROS node, ROS node ping the name of the node and I have two nodes here. I want to ping the first one. Pressing tab will fill it out for me. And I ping it. Pinging it sends a signal back and forth to the node and measures the round trip time. This way you can see how fast the node is running and if it's running at all or not. You can see it takes about one or two milliseconds to send a signal back and forth to the node, so my node is running. So we run a node using ROS run. We can use ROS a node list to see all the nodes running, and we can even ping it using ROS node ping name of the node. And so this was the node, and it's sending a number to a topic. I wanna see what is that topic. I can also list the name of topic using ROS topic list. This will show me the list of the topics that are exist. There are two topics down at the bottom. These are belong to the main ROS core. We don't uh, really need them, we don't touch them. The main topic that is built now using this publishing node is called data. This is a topic where I'm sending data to. You can uh, analyze a topic as well. For instance, I want to see what type of data is in it. ROS topic uh, type and the name of the topic data. It tells me there is a message in it that is float 64. So the data is in it, that's, it's just one number. I can also see what is inside of it. ROS topic echo, echo will show it to me, name of that topic. It's showing it, it's number 10. So a data is being published on the topic via this node and it's 10. I can you stop it by control and see. Remember, in this terminal, which I'm using to run the nodes, I won't touch them. These are working. If you close this, then the topic will be closed. This node is publishing to the topic, so I won't touch it. And 
another thing if uh, if we want to analyze the topic a bit more we can look at the frequency of the data that's being published to the topic ross topic hertz topic name which was data so this shows the frequency that data being published to it you can see it's about 10 hertz all the time this is one of the nice things in ROS. When you're building nodes, you can enforce a, st a very strict uh, frequency rate for data transmission. The node that I have built, we will see later how, publishes data at the frequency of exactly 10 Hertz. So the data that's being sent to this is takes 10 Hertz. In terms of second, one over 10 second 0.1 second every 0.1 second a data will be sent to this topic there is another uh, app in ROS which i uh, talked about called rqt rqt is a very interesting app that we can use to analyze all the nodes and topics and even save data or even plot them let's look at this rqt RQT opens up. When it opens up, it will have look like a window like this. There are several things you can do in here. If you go to introspection under plugins, you can see the nodes and topics that are communicating. Node graph. So this shows that I have one node called publisher. I can also see topics as well, if there was any topic here being published to. Because this node is just sending data to topic and there is no node to subscribe to it, we can't see anything here, but we can see there's just one node. You can also use this to save data. If you go to logging, you can save the data that's on the topics into a bag file. You can select data and save it here. I will show later, but I just want to go through some of the features. And you can also uh, plot uh, data. In visualization, if you go to plot, you can plot the data that's going through topic. We'll see these later. But this is another nice app that you can use to analyze topics and notes. Okay, so far I create, I run one node that's a Python code that's setting a date and a number to a topic. I had another node inside this package which will subscribe to that topic and read that data. I want to run that node now. Remember, running nodes is using ROS run name of the package tuto tab will fill it out for me. The node that will subscribe it was called subscribe node.py tab will fill it out for me now i want to run this this node i have written a code that will get the number that's been published to the topic which was 10 it says i heard 10 and then also prints out the time my computer time so this is the second node that will subscribe to the topic and they get the data. Let's check out the node list again. ROS node list. You will see that we have two nodes now, one publishing, one subscribing. And we can look at the topic again. ROS topic. What was uh, the, I wanna see what's inside the topic again ross topic echo and then name of the topic which was data let me look at the list of the topics first ross topic list so the topic name is data now i want to see what's in it again ross topic echo So this is the data in it. 
my node is receiving it and I have written a code to say I heard it and what time is it once again I want to open up the RQT to see okay what nodes exist Opening the RQT, I'm going to plugins, introspection. I want to see the node graphs. Now you can see that I have two nodes. One node is publishing to a topic named data, another node is subscribing to get data from it. This RQT and node graphs helps you to understand okay, what's happening inside the package. Sometimes you have so many nodes communicating through so many topics and if you want to so you see exactly what's going through them you can uh, come here and check out the node graphs one last thing that I want to do in this session is I want to show you how you can manually send data to a topic as well so I have one node in this window publishing data one node in this window receiving data I will close the publishing node. See this one that was receiving is stopped receiving data. There's nothing that it receives now. We can publish information to data uh, to a topic manually through a, a command window terminal as well. How do we do that? We use a ROS topic command. First again, let's look at the list of topics. I have a topic data. Nobody is publishing anything to it, so no node can read anything from it. There's no data on it. Let's see again what type of data was in there. ROS topic type data. It was a message that was float 64. Now I want to publish a data manually in there. The command that we use is called ROS topic pub, pub standing for publish, then the name of the topic data, I press tab, it will fill it for me. Then the type of the message that we want to send, it should be again this float 64. Pressing tab will automatically fill it for me. And what is the data itself should be? Pressing tab will fill it for me. It should be this format. Now I wanna send a number. Let's send 55. See here, the node that was in charge of receiving data heard that I've sent 55. I can manually send data to topic as well. Well, remember, a topic that's already built for a specific message can only accept that type of message. If I want to send an array here, so 212, it won't work. It gives you error. It says this communication line is not for this type of data.